Okay, so uh, hello everyone. My name is Andre with Indusoft and Robustus, and uh, I would like to welcome you to our webinar. One more from the webinar series. We're going to be talking about a very uh, interesting topic today. Uh, it's going to be a very technical webinar. If you are uh, already an Indusoft user, you're going to find a lot of interesting things here. Uh, it's going to be uh, much more into the uh, technical aspect of using this feature. That's the driver that we call the TXRX driver. That's a customizable driver, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, let me just show what's going to be our agenda for today's webinar. Again, my name is Andre Bastos, and uh, I run the QA Quality Assurance Team here at Indusoft. I'm going to do a brief introduction about what the TXRX communication driver is, and then we're going to start the hands-on uh, configuration and use of, of this driver. So we see the settings that we can configure, uh, how can we receive messages into Indusoft Web Studio using the uh, RX uh, type of uh, communication and use the TXRX driver, how can we send messages into other devices, how we can exchange messages where we send and then we receive some things. And then uh, we're going to go through a live demo. While we're doing all the presentation, we're going to be presenting how to do things. <coughs> and then uh, a little troubleshooting section. And finally, go to the Q&A session and, uh, where you can submit your questions. And uh, depending on the question, I may answer to everybody or I may answer them privately. And uh, some uh, webinar initial considerations. Uh, we if you have questions. You can send them both on the chat or on the QA window of the WebEx. Okay. Uh, sometimes the audio may fail, but by experience, we notice that the audio may fail for spe some uh, specific people. You know, uh, the others are still listening. So if you cannot hear it, uh, give it you know a few seconds. It may come back. Uh, if you know it's, you think that it's been long enough without audio, you can uh, send a chat, and uh, I'm gonna read and uh, see if there is anything that uh, has to be fixed here in my end. And uh, even though you may see only yourself on the attended list, uh, we have a lot of people attending this webinar specifically, <coughs> and uh, so that the, we what we do is that we don't show the name of everybody. They had problems in the past. You know, some people thought that they were by themselves, but actually, no. There's a lot of people. That what we do is that we don't show, uh, we don't make public the name of the people that are attending the webinar. Okay. At the end of the webinar, uh, we're gonna receive a survey, and uh, if you feel like it's gonna help us a lot, gonna help us improving things and uh, getting suggestions for uh, future webinars, if you do that, you know, as a thank you gift, we're gonna send you a T-shirt from our webinar series. Okay, the webinars uh, that Indusoft uh, does, they are always recorded, and you can access this webinar after, of course, we are done, as well as any other previous webinar that uh, we presented in our website. If you just go to Indusoft.com, you're going to have the support section. Under support, you're going to see the video library, and uh, one of the options on the video library is the webinars. All right. Okay, so. Uh, first, what is the TXRX driver? If we go back to see what the communication driver uh, feature is in Indusoft Web Studio, uh, the, that's the feature that we use to exchange data with field devices. Uh, in other words, the main reason for an HMI to exist in first place is to translate data that is on controllers into a graphical interface, right? So you're going to be able to see the bits and bytes that are in the, in the PLC, that are in the uh, uh, multi-loop temperature controllers and pressure controllers and things like this. You're going to get those uh, bytes and transform them into a graphical way that the user will be able to understand information that is in there and make decisions, start process, uh, monitor how the batch is doing, uh, you start and stop a machine and things like this, right? So that's the main concept of having a driver. 
and there are several communications drivers out there based on existing tunnel protocols. A protocol would be the language that the driver speaks or that the device speaks. Uh, a very common one is, for instance, the Modbus. Modbus has a very defined type of message that you can send to uh, an RTU, for instance, a remote terminal unity, and uh, that means we will understand the request that we are sending and send back the response. So for those uh, common protocols, in the software studio already has communication drivers prepared for that. So you don't have to customize the messages that are, are being sent. We make it on a way that the user can uh, configure it and communicate with the devices. And that's true also for several PLCs that are on the market. Ellen Bradley, uh, all the Ellen Bradley families, uh, we have for all the Siemens families, all the GE families, and of course for all the Schneider PLCs, we have for Triconics uh, PLC from the Invasive family. So, for those guys, we already have the communication driver, okay? But then we have a customer that uh, he's got this camera from this company called Cognax, and uh, that camera is an IP camera. It, it can exchange data. It's a very interesting vision system that uh, they're, I don't know, they're measuring a surface, and if they find something that uh, wasn't supposed to be there, they're going to send a message and uh, through Ethernet, and then that customer said, okay, why don't you have like a generic driver that we can, you know, send any message and uh, receive uh, any message, and uh, we receive that on the tag, and after that, you know, we look on the tag, and we decide what to do with this. And we thought, well, that's a very good idea. Uh, actually, we already have something similar to this because we use for our troubleshootings when you are writing communication drivers and uh, we want to force some situations, we want to force some stress tests. So, you know what? We're going to get that driver and make it available for the public. And uh, because if you have already used Indusoft and you already tried to troubleshoot any communication driver, you may have seen that the log on the output window or on the log window window, we show the message that we sent as TX transmit message and the one that we receive from the PLC as Rx. So we came up with this name CXRX, which is based on fully customizable driver. Okay? So the challenge is what if you have like in this case is IP camera, or if you have a scale, like uh, you have a Toledo scale and uh, you uh, you want to receive that, or what nowadays most commonly used are FID readers and barcode scanners. So they read the message and boom, we're going to send it to the tag. Right? And Valor is needing to send a message to receive that first and things like this. And now we have several customers that use our software in the pump stations and things like this where they have to print and they connect our software to a, a serial printer on the COM port and uh, they need to print that out. Basically, what you have to do is just send ASCII messages to the printer. There's not a specific protocol. You s whatever you send to the printer, that's what's going to print. So, those are some of the usages where you don't have, like, specifically Modbus or Botnet or any other already commercial protocol, right? So, that's a good situation where you could use the TXRX driver, all right? One more situation that you may use it is, what if you want to receive unsolicited messages from the PLC, but we don't have that option on the driver? Let's say you have, we have our ABCIT driver. That's our uh, driver that speaks with, for instance, Control Logix PLCs, Compact Logix PLCs, and those PLCs, they have the capability of sending unsolicited messages. Our driver, we don't have uh, the possibility of receiving those messages on the ABCAP driver. However, you can configure the uh, TXRX driver in a way that's going to be listening to the uh, uh, PLC uh, specific port on the CIP case. By default, it's 44818 TCP port. So we open that port, and if the PLC sends the message, you get a message and put it into the tag. All right, so those are some uh, typical usage for the TXRX driver. So, uh, as long as those devices, they have either Ethernet or serial, 
including USB on a case where the device has a device driver that can emulate a COM port, you can create interface with, uh, from Windows Software Studio to communicate with these drivers. Right? So, uh, we have out there scales that they uh, speak Ethernet and they send ASCII messages with the weight that they are measuring. Uh, we have a lot of uh, RFID scanners with their own uh, way of messaging. We can say their own protocol, but we don't have the driver for them. So whenever uh, the tag is detected in red, they're going to send the message right away. And uh, those are, uh, several of them, they uh, speak serial uh, R232. And uh, we've been working with some uh, Wi-Fi uh, scanners that, you know, they have the capability of sending uh, messages to a TCPIP server, in our case, would be our TXRX driver. So they uh, scan it, boom, the message gets sent to our tags. All right? So uh, some of the features about this driver. We have that for any of the Windows operating system that we run. That includes Windows CE, uh, Windows Embedded, Standard, Windows XP Embedded, Windows uh, CE 7, all the servers, that means 2008, 2000. It R2, 2012, 2012 R2. Uh, as you go for the uh, advanced configuration, uh, I don't know, there was not a challenge that we faced that we could not make this driver communicate with. And uh, whenever we had that, we actually improved the driver. So, so far, we were able to, uh, to uh, tackle any challenge that we had with this driver. The communication can be over Ethernet, serial, also, Ethernet UDP IP, but on that case, as we're going to see, we're going to use the SIR encapsulation using UDP mode. And that's also possible. There are several cases out there that are already using that. Or USB with an important remark that when you're going to use USB, let's say for a barcode scanner, that device needs to be able to emulate a COM port on your device. Okay? If you just have a USB that sends them as direct to the keyboard, a lot of the barcode scanners, they are like uh, keyboard emulators. You don't have anything to do on the driver, right? Because you're going to be reading and you're going to be sending that information as keyboard information into, let's say, a text field or something like this, right? So for, uh, if you want to use something that you know has a screen reading that data, you're going to be on the background, you need to have a device that is able to emulate a COM port or even an Ethernet port, okay? Uh, this driver is able of sending both ASCII messages, so you have a string tag, you write a text, and you want to send it, and uh, we can do that, or we can send purely uh, binary messages. So if you know the ASCII code, or actually if you know the binary code, the hex decimal value that you want to send to the device, you can do that as well, as we're going to see here, just separate the bytes by spaces. The same way as we can send ASCII and binary messages, we can also receive those. We can receive solicited, there we send a message first and then we wait for the response, as well as unsolicited messages. In the case of uh, RFID reader, as soon as the tag reaches the reader, it's going to send a message. So we consider that as unsolicited messages. We didn't send anything before receiving, so we act more as a slave type of driver. Okay, so for receiving, when we receive the message, uh, we have different ways to consider that the message was completed, as you're going to see. So sometimes the device sends always the same amount of characters, so we can receive uh, by the number of characters, or the device sends a specific character that says at the end of the text, so you may consider the message done here, or after a certain interval, so we send the message, there's no specific number of characters, no specific uh, end of text character, but it's any anyway, so we can also handle that specific situation on the TXRX driver. So let's go into configuring that driver. As uh, a Windows user, if you're familiar already with our communication drivers, you know that we have over 200 communication drivers, all part of the product. You don't have to pay any extra for, for uh, using any of our built-in drivers. Okay? We have some very specific cases like the uh, electrical protocol, like the IEC 870 drivers, 
and uh, DNP, but very specific cases. Other than those, you know, all the drivers, Mugbus, Alan Bradley, G. Fano, Siemens, you are capable of using all of them. CXRX is one of the drivers that comes with the product. As you install the driver, you have this, uh, this driver available. So how do you insert that on your project? On the Inosoft Tab Studio environment, you go on the Comp tab, and then the first folder is going to be drivers. You right click on it. You have the option to add remote drivers. You're going to see the window that shows all the drivers. You're going to find CXRX there, and you hit select. That driver will be added into your project. All right? So, some specific configurations. Uh, this driver is considered by us an uh, advanced driver. And why do we say that? Uh, a lot of other drivers, basically what we do on the driver, we mimic what you have on the PLC. So, uh, if you configure the PLC to be uh, from a specific family, let's say, uh, on the Alan Bradley, the old uh, families where you have the PLC 5 or Slick 500 and things like this. So we make you configure those parameters here. But always in a familiar way that, you know, we want you to identify yourself. If you're familiar with the PLC, you're going to find the features that you're looking for on the Web Studio uh, development interface. The challenge here is that when you go to a customizable driver, such a customizable driver like TXRX, we need to create our own interface because this is very generic. So uh, one thing that we did was we didn't want to write one driver for serial and one driver for Ethernet. So how do we make the customer now, uh, choose between serial or Ethernet? Well, the first thing that we came up with was the field here called uh, TCPIP port. If you keep TCPIP port zero, that means we're going to speak through serial communication. It could be one of the encapsulation modes, but by default, we're going to go to the COM port. Whatever COM port you configure here, on this example, we would go to the COM2, and then you have the proper uh, serial communication settings to be configured, like baud rate, data bits, stock bits, parity, and things like this. All right? So if you have a USB connection that can uh, emulate the COM port, this is where you would configure the COM port would be here on the uh, COM port number of the serial configuration. Okay? So if you enter any number here on the, on the TCP IP port, we will not go to the COM port anymore. We're going to go uh, Ethernet and open that specific TCP IP port. Okay, let's say that you configure that the number uh, 1234. As we start the driver, we're going to be opening that port in listening mode, and uh, we will not go to the serial port. Okay, so this driver can be both serial and Ethernet. Well, on my project, I have both situations. I may want to go serial and Ethernet because I have one device that uh, is this IP camera that's going to be sending me Ethernet messages, but I have also the RFID scanner which goes serial. You can duplicate the driver as many times as you want, and you can configure uh, different parameters for all of them. <coughs> okay? Some other thing that we have here, uh, max message buffer. We needed to implement this feature because uh, we had some situations where the receiving messages, they were too big, and uh, we were uh, having like huge queues of messages. So we created here this field where, uh, and that's a situation, for instance, when we were interfacing with GPS systems. So we were receiving uh, a lot of messages uh, per uh, second, and uh, we were unable to process all of them basically because we were receiving like a thousand messages per second. So we created a buffer that what we do is uh, when the message, when we reach this buffer, we ignore the messages that are coming until this buffer is below this value again. And that's the number of messages. Okay? So again, that's an advanced driver. So uh, a lot of people don't use some of those parameters. And uh, very specific people may use. And you know, as they use, they learn more how to properly do a fine tuning on using uh, something like the uh, max message buffer. 
this hit here on the right side called ETX, uh, this is the end of text character. Let's say that you're going to be communicating in ASCII, and uh, the last character that you received, you say, yeah, my message is complete. Let's say that you're talking to a scale. This scale sends you the weight. And to say, okay, that's the end of the message, they send a specific, uh, let's say, a character return line feed, which, and the call is 080Z. So as you receive a 0Z, you consider that end of message. And that you can configure here, the specific hexadecimal code for that. Or you can keep a no value there, which means we are not dealing with any end of text characters. All right? And this field here called uh, no character, we kept this for legacy mode. This is for uh, the time when the driver could not handle uh, pure binary, uh, binary messages. So we would receive a string from the user, and uh, if there was any zeros on that message, we would consider that an end of message, as we're going to see when we talk in ASCII mode. So we could replace that zero with another character, and uh, we would consider uh, this way we would work around uh, receiving zeros when communicating ASCII mode. So this is still there mostly for uh, legacy purposes, but we don't need that anymore, okay? So uh, how can we configure this driver to speak Ethernet? And I say native Ethernet because we have communication drivers that are serial communication drivers that are Ethernet, and some drivers that are both. For instance, our Mugbus is late driver can be both serial and Ethernet, and uh, this TXRX driver can also be both serial and Ethernet. So when I say native uh, TCP IP, it's because here on this field, serial encapsulation, you keep it to none. The serial encapsulation allows you to encapsulate a serial protocol into TCP IP, UDP IP, or into a modem. So if you keep this in, as none, and you configure a port number here, we will treat this, this driver as Ethernet. But we will also open this port here for receiving messages. And that's why we have put here on the important when you configure a TCP port number, the driver will open and use that port in runtime mode. Okay? So if you want to speak Ethernet, here you put the TCP port for that protocol that you cannot communicate with. If you keep it zero, we're going to open the driver in serial mode. What if instead of Ethernet, I need to speak UDP. Well, uh, when we first wrote this driver, we didn't have the serial encapsulation, and we wrote this driver only for TCP IP and serial. After we implemented the serial encapsulation, uh, we noticed that, wow, a lot of people did use this driver for UDP as well. So if you want to communicate UDP, I'm going to show an example here uh, during the live demo. When you uh, want to do UDP, what you have to do is you configure a serial encapsulation for UDP IP mode. You enter the IP address of the device you want to communicate with, and you enter the UDP port number that you want to connect to. You must keep this field here that says TCP IP port zero. Otherwise, we will open this driver as TCP IP mode, and we're going to ignore all these parameters here. So if you want to speak UDP, you make this field here 0, this field here UDP, and configure here the IP and port number of the device that you're con going to connect to. Can I connect to more than one device? Sure you can. And uh, we can show you how to do that. All you have to do is on the TX worksheet where you're going to be sending the messages, you enter the IP address of the other device, colon, the UDP port number, and a pipe. That pipe is going to... Uh, let, uh, let us know that you're going to another device, all right? And finally, we're going to go into sending and receiving messages, all the options that we have. So the concept of receiving a message or incoming message. The first thing is, how do I know that the message is complete? Uh, the device may be sending me a uh, huge text or they may be sending me only the value of uh, uh, a scale that is measuring weight or a uh, serial number that was read by the RFID code and things like this. So how do we know that 
Okay, I received all those bytes. Now I can start processing these bytes. So we have a few options. The receiving message is more considered this late part of the driver because unnecessarily I may be requesting those messages to be received, the device may just sending it. So when you're talking about uh, a slave driver on Web Studio and you're familiar with the, the communication driver, the fields enable, reason idle, and the read trigger are not used. They're just in listening mode. Okay? You can use the read completed field to uh, warn you that the message has been received. And so on the on the project, whenever this read completed changes, you're gonna execute an action, gonna execute a script. So you can use that guy. But do not use enable read and idle, do not use read triggers, not for the TXRX driver ever. Okay? So if you want to receive messages, just create the worksheet with the proper settings and wait for the message to come. Don't uh, use these guys to trigger anything. All right? So on the driver settings, uh, as you insert the driver, you can open the driver settings. You can configure some parameters that can be used as, uh, for receiving messages. So one of them is the end of text character that I put in here. Is the 0A in this case, which would be the, the line feed or the current return, actually. And uh, one other option that we have is when you are receiving a message, and uh, we don't have enough text, we don't have a fixed number of characters, so there's a specific interval. If we don't receive any byte on that specific interval, we consider the message complete. Okay? And the interval is configured in here. So we have the driver settings, you have this advanced button here. You click on the advanced, and you configure this field here, interval between characters. If we receive uh, a message and uh, the interval between two characters is more than 500 milliseconds on this example here, we consider the message that we received is completed. All right? So that's where you configure the things. So for receiving messages, and we're going to go now into some of the live demo. We have three options. We have uh, the header, where we enter on the header, Rx, and a specific number. That means that whenever the message we receive uh, has uh, that specific number of characters, we consider the message. And that was very common uh, in the beginning uh, when we were interfacing with uh, mostly barcode readers. They would all always send a message with the same size. As we involve the driver for other situations, we notice the needs of the other type of headers. So the other options are Rx timeout, which we just talked about uh, when the interval between characters is uh, longer than what we have configured on the driver advanced settings, we consider the message completed. Or the ETX option, where you configure the end of text character. Okay? So this allows you to configure worksheet with the tag that you receive the messages by the device, both solicited and unsolicited. This always use the standard driver sheet, and these are the three options that we have. Okay? So uh, I'm going to go here and start configuring the driver, so you're going to start seeing those messages that we are receiving. All right? So I'm going to switch now to my Indusoft Web Studio. And uh, I don't have here an IP camera or iScale or anything like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to emulate some of these devices. I'm going to go to another terminal, and I'm going to start sending messages into, into Software Studio so we can see those messages that are being sent by other uh, devices. Okay? So uh, before the webinar, I was doing some uh, little rehearsal here. So I have already configured a project, but let's go and see how we have uh, configured this project. So first thing we have to do is to insert the driver on the project. doesn't matter if your target is Windows CE embedded or Windows uh, desktop. That will include servers and uh, 7, 8, XP, etc. So go here on the drivers, right click, add remove drivers under the COM tab, add remove drivers. You're going to see our drivers list, and you're going to find the TXRX driver here as one of the options on the driver. So if I remove this, 
If I go back into the list, I can type T here, and I'm going to find the TXRX driver right here. Okay, so I select this three phones of access. So here shows the drivers that I have on my project. Good. So I'm going to configure this driver now. So I'm going to configure first the part that's going to receive messages. So I go here on the settings. And uh, how am I going to configure this driver? I don't have right now a way to make it go serial. You're going to start with native TCP IP, and you're going to do some UDP IP as well. All right? So I have to go here and configure the serial encapsulation to none. And I have to enter here any number different than zero. All right? And that can be any number that I can put in there. All right? So I'm gonna I put here like a 2222, and uh, that's you know a number easy enough to remember. And uh, I kept all the other parameters default. I'm gonna go here on advanced, and my interval between characters is 500. So if I configure a worksheet with the interval between characters at 500 or uh, a header at Rx timeout, if the interval between the characters is longer than 500 milliseconds, then you're going to consider the message completed. So that's how you're going to start receiving some of those messages. All right? So then I'm going to configure a worksheet to receive those messages. So let me get here uh, the worksheet. Let me clean it up for now. And my worksheet that's going to receive the messages. Again, I don't configure anything on the neighbor with my idle. I don't configure anything on the neighbor idle tag change. And my first example is going to use the RX timeout. I don't configure anything on the station either. What I'm going to do is, as I start the driver, I'm going to open this TCP IP port number so the other device can connect to mine and send messages through that port. Okay? So the first example that we're going to have, we're going to be receiving purely, uh, our, uh, purely ASCII messages. So I'm going to put here one tag. I'm going to uh, create my tag, Rx tag. And uh, this tag has to be a string type of tag, OK? So if we look here, we, I can figure this tag as a string type, OK? Could I receive that as a numeric? Very rare are the cases where you're going to receive just, let's say, one byte, a numeric byte, and you could use this as a numeric tag. Okay? Uh, I, would, I was going to say that 99.99999% of the cases, you're going to need a string tag in here to receive the whole message. All right? So I have configured my tag here, Rx tag, and I'm going to put here my read completed tag. So I create a tag here called RC. So whenever I receive a message, the message will be loaded into this RX tag here. And this RC here is going to toggle. All right? So I'm going to start my driver now. And you're going to go to uh, in viewer mode. So here on the output window, I'm already showing that the driver was started. And this is going to be very helpful in a lot of situations where I want to see the bytes entering here and see if they're going directly to the tag. So here I'm waiting for incoming messages. So I'm going to go on another device here. And I'm going to connect to the driver. And I'm going to send some messages to it. All right, so I went to uh, our device, and I sent the whole alphabet here uh, into the driver. When I go back to my development, I see here that I actually received the ASCII characters for the alphabet. So it goes all the way from uh, 41 into 5A. All right? So I'm going to send another message now.
So now, now I have received on my Rx tag here, I have received it like 1 to 3, comma, 5, 4, 6, comma, ooh. That raises me a question. What do I do with the message once I receive it? Okay, so now we have already seen that we can receive the message. All right, I'm using here the Rx timeout option. And uh, I could be using here uh, other options, like I could be using the ETX option if I have configured an ETX tag. The same way what would happen was that we would receive the message here. So just as an example, I'm going to configure here uh, a different type of header. I'm going to put, for instance, Rx colon 5. So that's actually not colon, just Rx 5. So, once I have received five characters, I'm going to consider the message completed. Important thing uh, for users that are already used to using Indusoft, if you modify anything on the, on the driver, because it is a slave driver, this will not take place right away. Okay, you have to stop the driver and start the driver again. When we start the driver, we read all the worksheets and we prepare the memory for receiving values. All right, so I change it to Rx5, and I'm going to send here a message with only five characters. There you go. All right, what happens if I send with uh, more characters? we get only the first five characters, okay? And that is because we have configured here a header as Rx5. So as soon as we receive five characters, we consider the message done and we ignore the rest, okay? Only the first five were taken. I sent here the same string that I sent before, but with a specific length, five characters, all right? Okay, so the other header option that we would have is the ETX. So the ETX, if I, to use that, I'll have to configure here a ETX character. So let's say I put here 0Z. As you, if you see here on my, uh, actually I'm going to put 0A, is the last character. So on the message that we received before, you notice that we receive it, some of them with a 0, D, 0, A, right? So that will mean that whenever we receive these two characters here, or the last character 0, A, that means the message is completed. So I go here on my header, instead of using Rx5, I'm going to configure that for ETX. I restart my, pro my uh, project. I'm going to send a message here now. And there we go. You may have noticed also that uh, we have, uh, I, this guy here has been toggling. What I did here, I'm using the tag for read completed for changing the color. So whenever you receive a message, you see that we have uh, toggled that. I'm going to send the same message again. So the only thing that changed was this guy here. Because I received the same message, so nothing changes here on the tag that I'm receiving. But you can see here on the uh, on the output window, you know, our big helper, right click, settings, protocol analyzer. So we see all the bytes that are coming. So what we see on the tag, we are seeing here ASCII code, right? So when I receive 31, that's the hexadecimal code for the number one. When I receive 32, that's the hex decimal code for the number two. Two C is my colon, right? So, actually comma, I'm sorry. So, this is my comma and here I have a comma again and here I have a comma again, right? So here we are translating this into uh, ASCII characters. 
What if I want to receive those as uh, instead of receiving in uh, ASCII, I want to receive purely binary messages, okay? So, we haven't configured anything yet into the address field, right? So, if I want to receive anything in hex, or if I want to be able to somehow parse the message that I'm receiving or treat it, we can configure things here on the address field that will help us doing that. Okay, so I have here on purpose a message with commas because a lot of times we are receiving messages that are comma separated values, CSV messages. So we can already treat the messages on the driver. So if we switch here for the presentation real quick, as we go on the address, we have the following options. First, uh, if you configure nothing on the address, when you're receiving messages in ASCII mode, we're going to do what we did so far. We receive the whole message and we put on the tag that is in here. All right? But we have also the option to uh, treat the message that you are receiving. And for that, we have two options. First, we can configure a length on the address field. So let's say that we are receiving uh, 20 characters. What do you want? The first five characters to go to a tag and the other five characters to go to another tag. Right? So, let's do this. All the worksheet that we are working right now. I'm going to change this header here to become, actually, instead of ETX, it's going to be RX timeout. So I don't have to worry about the number of characters that I'm sending, and I have, don't have to worry about making sure that I include the uh, ETX character. So I just put Rx timeout in there. And I, I have this array here. This is uh, one tag. And I have here another tag, let's say uh, Rx tag uh, array position one. On this guy here, I'm going to load the first. So I put L left, the first five characters, or the first seven characters that, that I received. I'm going to go on this tag here. The next seven characters that I receive, I'm going to go on this other tag here. So I configure the L, column 7, and let's see what's going to happen with the tag that I'm going to receive now. So I start the driver. And I'm going to send a message that has more than uh, 14 characters. And maybe I should have configured here. But you know, let me go back here to my terminal and uh, connect to the driver again. There you go. So now I have uh, received the message, and I have here the first seven characters are on my tag Rx0 here. And the second group of seven characters, they are here on my second line. That's where I have my tag Rx position one. If I open the screen on the development environment, that's what I have. Okay. So I'm going to stop this guy here now. And I'm going to show the second option that we have here on the presentation. The S option. S goes for separator. So this is very helpful when the message that you receive 
it's comma separated or any other specific separator that you can identify. What, what is important is that you have to put the ASCII code, not the character itself. So in my case here, I'm going to send a message, and the separator is going to be a comma. So if I go here on my driver, I'm going to configure it uh, for comma separated messages. I'm going to put here separator, and I will not put, for instance, a comma. I need to put the ASCII code for comma, which is to C. Okay? So that goes on my uh, RX tag 0, that goes on my RX tag 1, that's going to go, uh, the other path is going to go to my RX tag 2. And to all of them, I'm going to put my separator at comma. All right? So I'm going to reset the tags. I'm going to start again. And I'm going to send that string that I uh, have configured before, where I have a 1, 2, 3, comma, 4, 5, 6, comma, and so forth. All right? So I'm getting this string from here. And there you go. 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, 6, 8, 7, 9. Right? So, as we receive the message, well, this, this third one here starts in 1, 2, 3, and then here's my comma. 5, 4, 6, here's the comma. 8, 7, 9, here's the comma. And the rest of the message is ignored because I haven't configured tags to receive the rest of the message. All right? So, so far, we have seen how we can receive messages. So, let's say that I'm ready and that my uh, RFID reader receives a tag, sends to me, it gets to my tag here, and from that point on, I can use those tags on my project the way I want. So, I can use it on reports, I can insert that data into the database, we can do that automatically. You always have this read completed tag which is quite helpful whenever this tag changes. We know that we have received something and we may have to take some action. So you can use our scheduler to sense a change on this tag and uh, with this scheduler we're going to go and uh, uh, trigger a specific script. That script can uh, generate a report or can update the screen and uh, can send a message to another device to start a specific action and things like this. All right. So, so far we did everything in ASCII mode. Let's take a look. What, if, what I actually need is this on my tags. You know? What if, you know, whatever I get from the device has to be in hex mode? Oh, that's quite simple. When receiving messages, the headers are the same. So, if I go here in the presentation, that's the next slide. You just have to put H where you're receiving the messages. So, for the, if I'm using the length option, the L option on the address, you put HL and the number. If we're using separator, you put HF and the separator. So, if we go back and put only H, that's what we expect to receive, this type of message. So, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to clean this guy up. And if I don't have anything, what will I receive here? The ASCII message, something like this. All right. If I put here at H, as I receive the messages, I'm gonna send a couple of messages here. You're gonna have the actual byte values for these guys. So I'm connecting now, and I'm gonna send the whole alphabet. There it is, and you have that in ASCII code. Now I'm going to send another string here, the one that we have the comma separated values. And here's the message. All right, so this is especially uh, important when we receive zeros on the message. When you're talking about ASCII and you receive any zero, ASCII considers zero the end of a string, so we ignore anything that's coming after that, and several times zero is the first character that we receive. 
All right? Okay, so we have seen how we receive messages. And how do we send messages? Sending is m even easier. Sending, you can see here a worksheet. So I have to be here a worksheet for sending. You put here a string tag. That's the one that's going to send the message. So whatever value you put here on this tag is the value that's going to be sending. So real quick here, considerations when we are sending messages. You can send either using the right on tag change or the right trigger on the worksheet. So you can use either this field here, right trigger, to send the value from this tag here into the device, or an embryo tag change, which means whenever this tag changes, we're going to send a message. All right? On the station field, you put the IP address, colon, port number that you're trying to reach if you're using a if you're using Ethernet, if you're using serial, nothing in there. And if you're using UDP and you're going to an IP address different than the one configured on the serial encapsulation, you enter here the IP address and the port number from the device that you're trying to connect to. Okay, so if we go uh, simple native Ethernet here, on these station fields, I'm going to configure the IP address. I'm going to send a message to you. And, uh, if I configure an ETX character, I'm going to include that ETX character. If I don't configure, I don't send anything. And the write completed can be used to show that the message was sent. So if I go back here on my uh, development environment, I'm going to change this back here. Group, I'm going to replace. Instead of read completed, I'm going to use my write completed tag to show when I read changes. Okay? So I can connect to a device and send a message for that device. All right? So how can I uh, configure a device here to receive messages? So uh, I can simply go to a specific device that has something open there. I'm going to, for example, go here and use one of my troubleshooting tools that I like. And we're going to talk about that uh, here we go, communications, hyper terminal. In one of these slides, options how to troubleshoot that. And they're going to create a PCP IP connection. Going to use the same port, 2222. I'm going to try to connect, won't be able to, but I'm going to make this guy real listening for my messages. Okay, so this guy is this one that has this IP here. And I'm going to send a message to that guy there. So I'm going to start the driver. I'm going to type something here on the tag that I'm going to receive, that I'm going to send a message. So. As I look here on my device, it has received whatever string I put in there, and you can see that the write completed also toggled. I'm going to tap here. I hit enter. So this guy here uh, toggled, and I have sent a message to my hyperterminal here. Right? And the hyperterminal replied to me. As you can see, because I had the uh, RX worksheet ready, I have received a message from the other device. So here we go. And uh, I have configured that for receiving uh, pure binary uh, hexadecimal. I have received a response there. So I just sent another message. And here it is. And I have received a reply from that as well. Okay, so I can send either uh, reply uh, like a app like this, or I could go and send binary messages. So to send hexadecimal, all I have to do is to put a H on the header, HTX. Now instead of sending the text the way we are doing. 
we can send characters including zeros on it. Okay? So, if I start the driver in here, instead of doing this like this, we would send just so like this. Uh, So I'm going to send this, answer. All right, I have just sent this to that device, which wasn't listening, so it didn't get <laughs> anything. So wait for a call. Let me see if I can send again. And if I look here, it shows that it failed to connect to that device. So let me stop this guy now. And uh, I'm going to call again. All right. So now this, uh, this has started. So I change another the tag once more. If I look here, now it was OK. So if I look here on my hyper terminal, we have received A, B, C, D, E. So I sent the binary codes for this guy. OK? So if I, instead of, uh, instead of sending the binary codes for uh, letters, if I were sending here, let's say, uh, lower case, then you have like a 6 1, 6 2, 6 3, 6 4. So that's the uh, lower case for A, B, C, D. I send this. I look on my device, and I have received A, B, C, D. All right? So then we go and find the case where I'm going to receive messages if I send something. So that, those are the solicited messages. But the important part to understand here is that the solicited messages, the TX and the RX, Worksheets, they are independent. You have to configure both. Okay, the TX is the one that's going to send something, and the RX is going to just see and wait. All right? So let me configure an example here where we're going to go to a Modbus device, and I have here a uh, Modbus message. So I have a specific device here in the office. Notice that I have a lot of zeros in here on the message. And with all the zeros, I have to use binary. Otherwise, you know, uh, the other device will not receive anything. So let me connect to my device there. That's the IP address where it is. Let me reset the tag database. I'm going to start. So here, I'm going to put the message that I'm going to send. I'm going to hit enter. Message sent. Reply received. And the reply, I have used RX timeout, which means whatever I received. If, you know, once the message is done, I'm going to load into the tag. So here is what I have received. All right? So on this case, uh, what am I going to do with this value? Then, you know, it's up to, uh, to you on your project what you're going to do with this. All right? But several cases, you can send ASCII messages, receive ASCII responses. Other cases, just receive the ASCII and solicited. And several cases, that's why implemented, you have to have a way of sending zeros on the message or sending binary codes. And that's how you do that. All right, I'm going to do another example here real quick, how we could do UDP connections. So we have here a PLC that speaks UDP. So I'm going to change my tier encapsulation to go into UDP. Going back to the first slide, I have to configure this guy with zero. So it uses whatever I put on the serial encapsulation. That's the IP address that I'm going to, and that's the part number that I'm going to as well. All right? So I'm going to configure here my header as HTX because I'm going to send binary. 
my Rx is going to be Rx timeout, so whenever the message is done, I'm going to receive it back. I'm going to reset my text database. Everything good? I'm going to start this. And I'm going to send a message for that PLC there. I have copied the message here. And now hit enter. Message is sent. And no response received. Or it took a while, but we got a response now. Okay, so other response, if you see, we start with a C0, and then it goes to the, uh, and then it has a 0, and then 0, 7, 0, 0. So if I would receive this in ASCII mode, we, that would fail. We would consider that uh, message completed already on the second byte. Okay, so that's why it's important to be able to send also uh, pure uh, hexadecimal codes. All right. So with this, we have covered all the possibilities for uh, this driver. So just some tips and tricks for mainly for troubleshooting this driver. Sometimes it may look like uh, you're supposed to be receiving something and you are not receiving anything. Of course, you're going to read the help. The help may be confusing if you're using for the first time, or you may be trying to uh, to send ASCII code and it looks like something's uh, not working. So what uh, I recommend is that if you use another third-party software, first to debug if your machine is actually able to connect to that device, not the driver, but your computer, OK? So back in the day with Windows XP, we could use hyperterminal, and that's what I was using here. I create a hyperterminal connection. With hyperterminal, you can send COM, a uh, message to the COM port, and uh, you can connect Ethernet as well. This can be a server side that's going to be waiting for a, for a call, or you can connect to the driver and actually send messages to the driver as well. So that's you know, a very helpful tool. But for some reason, Microsoft removed hyperterminal from their operating system now uh, since Windows 7. Actually, I don't remember even seeing that on Windows Vista. So uh, without uh, hyperterminal, then the other tool that can do a lot of stuff like this that a lot of people have been using is this tool here called PuTTY. So if you go to PuTTY.org, you can have something that is very similar to what uh, we could do with uh, Windows 7. Uh, you can send raw messages, telnet, you can send you com, you can send you TCP. So that can help you debugging if you properly configure the driver or not. So one thing that is very simple to do also is to use a uh, telnet command. So you just call a telnet command and send information to your driver and see if the driver is receiving. So I have configured here my driver to receiving messages on the port number. I'm going to change that back again into none. I'm going to put here my part 2222. Let me stop the driver. Let me clear everything. And I can, for instance, run here. I'm going to start the driver first. So here the driver is running. So I'm going to create a telnet connection to the driver. Telnet, my IP address, and the port that I'm trying to connect to. So I am connected to the driver. So whatever I type here, I'm going to receive on the driver now, because I have configured to receive uh, peer hacks. That's what I have received. OK, so if I uh, type something else here now, number four. You know, that's what I have received, plus a carry return because, you know, I hit enter. Let's see, carry return. All right. So, hyperterminal several times can help you understand if you properly configure the driver for receiving the messages, or you can connect your device, send the messages, and see if the device reacts the way you were expecting. All right. 
And if you need something more advanced, you can use this program here called uh, Puri.org. That's something that uh, sometimes I use for debugging, and uh, I learned that from other developers, uh, you know, even from uh, other companies. So this can be very helpful. So I'm open now for your questions and answers. I apologize, I've been over an hour now, and uh, I'm going to read the questions and uh, respond depending on the uh, answer going to be either privately or I'm going to respond to everybody. And submit your questions either on the chat or on the QA. All right, uh, I got a very uh, good question here. The first one is the uh, I mentioned the capability to communicate with more than one device via the TXRX worksheet. I detail the use of the pipe character uh, after the IP port, IP column port field. Uh, what do I mean by that? So uh, that's a very good question. Thanks for asking. The first thing is uh, specifically about the pipe character. The pipe character we use only if we are in UDP mode, okay? That's a feature, not specifically for this driver, but for in the software studio, okay? So if you have a serial driver and you want to run that driver in an encapsulation mode, like on this case, I put UDP IP here, I entered here a specific IP address, right? But what if I have entered here, for instance, an IP address like this, but I want to communicate with that other IP address that I have configured before. So I'm configuring here to be encapsulation. So I'll have to go here on the worksheet that I'm sending the message to. And because I am on UDP mode, I will enter here the IP address, the port number, and the type. But this is only when I'm using encapsulation. All right, so the serial driver over encapsulation. So if I start the driver now, and I want to send a message, that message is going to go for this device here, not the one with the IP 1111. Okay, so if I get the message that I will send uh, to my UDP PLC, So I sent to that PLC instead of sending to the 1111. Oh, actually, I intended to. <laughs> there you go. That's where I sent it to. All right, so if you are going TCP IP, uh, native TCP IP, where you have configured here to none, and uh, here you have the IP port of the device that you're trying to go to, you don't use the pipe. You enter all of the IP address in one worksheet. So here I can put, let's say, here I'm going to this specific device, and I can create another one. So TX message 2, and this is going to go to my other PLC. On the header, I'm going to put here HTX. And here I can put another tag. As we should create a tag, we put here a string. So this is the tag that I'm going to send to this other PLC here. All right? So it's not a single worksheet. If you have to communicate with more than one device, you're going to have to use multiple worksheets. All right. Okay, I got a question here. Interesting. Uh, why does it seem that the incoming messages appear to be more than one when uh, with the first character on the first line and the rest on the next line? Uh, honestly, uh, I'm really not sure why. Uh, like in this case, there's only one message, but as you can see, we have several RX here. I get the, uh, if I need to call this the timeout for printing the line, is different than the timeout between interval. If we go here, 
once this interval is elapsed, that's when I consider the message completed. You know? So, uh, I'm not sure exactly why when we print, it looks like several messages. But the message is going to be gone, going to be done only, you know, after uh, we load the message into the tag. All right? The question is, has anyone used the TXRX driver to receive unsolicited messages from a control logics PLC? So, uh, the Allen Riley control logics PLC uh, has, a, that has one function to send unsolicited messages to other PLCs or to other Ethernet IP devices. Uh, I don't know if anyone that has done that, but I don't, I don't see why that wouldn't work. How would I configure that? Uh, I don't, you know, I, I cannot uh, configure right now my control logics PLC to do that. I don't have it ready to send messages either. But what you can do is you go here on the TechRx settings, and here you configure the port number 44818. That's the default port for the CIP protocol. And now I'm ready to receive any messages that are coming there. Ideally, you should configure the driver to receive in hex mode. So if there are any zeros on the messages, we are going to receive anyways. So that's a very interesting question. All right, I got another question here. How can you create multiple TXRX driver sheets? You know what? That's not a typical driver that you would have multiple driver sheets. For instance, uh, for receiving, so I'm going to repeat the question. How can you create multiple TXRX driver sheets? Okay? You may have multiple driver sheets for sending, but not for receiving. And why, uh, why is that? Because when you are, uh, when we are uh, receiving here, we're going to look for the header that says receive. So ideally, you should have the header either as Rx timeout or Rx number or a ETX. So as we receive, we're going to get the message and put into the specific tag that received the message. For sending, if you're going to send messages to different PLCs, then yes, you can have uh, different worksheets for the TX type of header, but not for receiving. I hope that answers your question, okay? All right, and uh, I just want to share with you guys, uh, we have here one attendant that uh, shared with me a very interesting uh, fact here, is that uh, I mentioned that you don't have hyperterminal on Windows 7. What happens is that there's not a feature that comes on Windows 7 anymore, okay? But if you copy the files, that the hyperterminal files from the XP machine into Windows 7, it's going to work, okay? So you can do this as well, all right? But basically, uh, if you look for hyperterminal on Windows 7, you won't find. We have a machine with XP, you know, uh, we always still have it. You can copy the files related to the hyperterminal into uh, Windows 7, and it's going to work as well. Okay, so thank you very much for sharing this information with us. All right, uh, other interesting questions. For creating multiple TXRX messages, do we have to create, uh, like, how do I handle that? Let's say that you have uh, multiple devices, and uh, you're going to have to use multiple COM ports. So you cannot work with uh, more than one COM port per driver instance. Here I configure the COM port number one if I'm going serial, right? So what you have to do, you have to duplicate the TXRX driver. Uh, and uh, to duplicate that driver, you actually you go to the project, to the uh, Inusoft Web Studio folder. So if I go here, and I get this. I go to the Web Studio Drivers folder. And here I'm going to find all the drivers that we have. So I'm going to find here the TechRx driver. I have to duplicate all the TechRx files. And my copy of this guy, they can have maximum of Five letters. So I'm going to create here 
Okay, I call CXRX Z. Okay, so now I can add one more instance of the CXRX driver. There you go. And I can configure another COM port for that instance of the driver. Okay, I hope that answers your, your question. All right. Okay, so uh, I have one more question here. That's a very technical one. Uh, they're asking if we can uh, use the TXRX driver to control the R, uh, CTS and RTS bits, okay? So this part uh, would not be done on the driver itself. So if you're doing serial communication, you're going RS485, click here on advanced, and you can configure the handshake here for those bits. So before sending everything, we can have here, for instance, uh, control RTS, yes, or we have the option always on. So yes means we're going to turn the uh, RTS on, send, and turn it off. Input always on, we turn it on, and we keep it on. And uh, the interesting thing that is that I have this always on here because we had a specific barcode reader that had to have this guy on. That's what, like, uh, the uh, the power for that bar barcode reader, it was using the pin number five for that. So, and for the CTS, we have the option to, uh, so we're gonna handle that automatically. It's not on the TXRX driver only, okay? All right, so uh, I got one more question here. That's similar to the one that we had before. So I'm going to read the question here. How to communicate with COM1, COM2, COM3? So if you're going serial and you have more than one COM port, what you have to do is you have to create multiple instances of the driver. The web store installation counts with one instance of TXRX driver. So what you have to do is you have to go to the Web Studio folder where you installed Web Studio and create other instances of the driver. So what you have to do is have to duplicate the driver-related files and rename them. So I'm going to duplicate here again. I'm going to rename this guy. As you can see, I still have a UAC enabled. So I'm going to put here TXRXY. One more file. No, I'm going to try to open my Outlook. There you go. So now I have in, uh, three instances of the CXRX driver, and I can point each one of these instances to a different COM port. So here I have CXRX going, for instance, to the COM port 2, CXRX Z going into COM port 3, and I'm going to add one more instance, CXRX Y, and that one's going to go to my COM port. Let's say six. Okay, so I hope that answers your question as well. Okay, uh, one question again. Is there a maximum number of instances? Not for the specific driver TXRX, but depending on your license, we count each instance towards the license. Okay, so uh, when you have your project and you define the target system, you define not only the number of tags, but also the number of concurrent drivers that you can have. Okay? So, let's say local interface. Right now, I cannot add any more instances of this driver. If I go here and I try to add any other driver, the select button is disabled. Okay? So, you need to have a license that allows you to add more instances. If you have, for instance, advanced server on your project, there's no limit of uh, how many drivers you can add on advanced servers. Okay? All right. Last chance for one more question. Okay, I got uh, two questions here.
So the, the first one they're going to read uh, uh, asks this. Is it possible to communicate with microcontrollers using TXRX? Uh, the microcontroller itself will have to have some sort of uh, communication interface, right? So the microcontroller by itself only has the pins. As long as you uh, create an interface to, uh, that can speak either RS-232 or Ethernet on that microcontroller, then yes, you can send whatever message to that microcontroller. Okay, the, the challenge when you have something that low level, electronically speaking, is you, know, you may have to implement the uh, communication part, let's say the RS-232 part or the Ethernet part with our microcontroller, okay? The other question that I have, is there a way to pull different COM ports with the same command using the same instance? Actually, no, no. Uh, use the same command, yes, but not use the same instance. You have to have different instances because each one of the instances of the driver is gonna go to one of the COM ports, okay? So probably what you have to consider if you have that many devices, maybe using, if of course that's a possibility, RS-485, because then you can create a multi-drop network, so you can put, you know, uh, just one count port and different devices, but then you're gonna go RS-485 uh, or uh, 422, you know, depending on the number of wires, either four wires or two wires, okay? All right? So uh, I guess that's going to be it for now. I want to show you guys how to contact Indusoft with any other questions that you guys may have. So here are our email addresses, our different websites. We have websites in uh, English, German, and Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. Here we have the phone numbers for each one of our offices. So we have offices in Brazil. We have offices uh, in Waldorf, Germany, and the uh, office in uh, here in Austin, Texas. So you can just send us uh, an email, call us with any questions you may have. If you have uh, uh, inquiries about pricing, about the different architectures, if you're not sure if Indusoft fits your needs, just give us a call. You know, we'll be more than happy to help you uh, seeing if uh, Indusoft is the right product for you. Okay, so. Having said that, I'd like to thank you guys for your time. Again, if you could fill the brief survey that we sent, uh, and you know that's gonna help us, and you're gonna send you a thank you gift. It's gonna be one of our T-shirts from our webinar series. And again, thank you very much for your time. I really like it. See you next time on the other on the next webinar. Keep in touch with Indosoft. Thank you.